you very much. It says, please speak six inches from the microphone. So I finally got some technique. Um, thank you for um, well, bringing us here. And being English, it's quite daunting. I'll just have to change this a minute. Oh, no. It might be another TV set. Um, I can't follow Neil. He's, he had his manager here, you see. And, uh, <laughs> And also, I don't have an invisible group. We're um, honored to have with us uh, Jason and Zoe Bonham. <laughs> We've got to split the award between them. It's going to be interesting. And uh, all that stuff that everybody was saying, I, I can't remember much about that, Ahmed. The thing is that because we didn't really work after about 1969 much, I can't remember very much at all. But I do remember... <laughs> I'm getting a bit more comfortable. I do remember um, Armit traveling around with us quite a lot and coming to see us in a sort of pre-recording state one time in, in London. I never wanted to do this. I always thought we'd always be rebels. Eddie's right. Uh, actually, Eddie's lucky. Um, Amit came all the way from New York to London to see us. <clears throat> we were um, doing some of the last final touches for, I think, uh, physical graffiti. And uh, he came to a, a rehearsal place in London. And a lot of pomp and circumstance. And just like um, Neil said, when Amit came, you had to be really, you had to be good, you know? So um, it was a pretty shitty place. Uh, it belonged to Emerson, Lake and Palmer. <laughs> and, uh, but we got a good rate on it. <laughs> and so we got a big catch on the stage and we started to show off to Armin and we had a big PA and uh, we were playing away furiously. And we were really proud. I think it was um, the Wanton song or some, some lurid piece of music. And uh, we were doing, it was as if we were playing in front of 20 or 30,000 people. We were doing all this stuff and the place was empty. There was nobody there except for Armit on the couch. And we spun around going, and Armit was snoring. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of other stories like that. I'm now I've, I've, I've taught myself right up a blind alley, but um, our relationships um, over the years have been wonderful. Uh, Led Zeppelin was with Atlantic Records from start to finish and I've been with them Atlantic from 68 to now and uh, I always consider that Armit um, and his faith in us despite the fact that the music scene was changing and that commerciality at one point became the actual uh, the hallmark of success alone. Armit was very uh, very strong in our favor and later so too was Doug Morris and um, I think we should mention um, Peter Grant who's already been mentioned in quite sort of colorfully. Uh, we did have some fun didn't we Ahmed? <laughs> I'm not going to be as explicit as one of your better friends earlier on. <laughs> and you said groupies, I didn't. Uh, but um, Looking at American music from England, we have to say that uh, that being English and having to put up with Herman's Hermits wasn't much fun. And uh, even though John Paul Jones did play with them for a bit. <coughs> oh, New York Times today? No. And uh, so we looked to America from an early age, and we admired the work of Howlin' Wolf and the writing of Willie Dixon and the playing of Muddy Waters and the singing of the Capri's, Jive Five, Raoul Donner so much American music that really formed our musical personalities and uh, whether it be the much maligned and uh, desperately in need of help Moby Grape, Arthur Lee the whole form of American music was such an impression and so uh, important to all of us whether it was Bonza listening to Bernard Purdy or uh, Alphonse Mouzon or Lee Michaels, the whole scene in, in the late 60s and the early 70s was so amazingly musically uh, varied and articulate. Um, I suppose it's the, it's the words of an old fart 
uh, or whatever I might be now, but uh, that in those times that music was so amazing and it was and, and to be in America at that time and to be a contributor to and a contributing factor to American music and the American music scene was a great honor and I think the probably the inspiration given to us by the American public was phenomenal and uh, I shall never forget being on us playing with uh, Janice and and the Doors and so many amazing artists and hanging out with the airplane and seeing Jonesy and Jack Cassidy disappearing up the corner to discuss the inner movements of a bass guitar. It was a wonderful time and all the way through our career we had a good time and I don't remember a single television set going anywhere. Uh, thanks. Well, for my part of this, I must say it's a great honor to be inducted. Actually, it's the second time for me, because actually earlier when I was inducted with the Yardbirds, and it's almost like inducted, induced, and this time it's the forceps, and uh, <laughs> some of you will get that. But anyway, uh, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, yes, thank you. I'd just like to add also my thanks to Peter Grant, who gave us the freedom to do what we did. And um, also, thank you, my friends, for finally remembering my phone number. Thank you. Bye. Uh, I'd just like to obviously um, thank everyone for making um, Led Zeppelin to me one of the most important bands that in the world and uh, listening to them and obviously my father for being one of the greatest rock and roll drummers of all time and this one's for him and he'd be very proud thank you very much uh, before we swap phone numbers um, I must also say uh, a big thanks over the last few years to the uh, why am I going doing all this, Armit? To uh, Bill Kirbishley, who's helped us tremendously um, and helped uh, renovate, uh, renovate, rectify, do something for us anyway. Thanks a lot, Bill Kirbishley, and uh, and thank you all our friends in New York and, and America. And uh, I've never been up so late for years, so I've got to go to bed in a minute. Thanks a lot.